Hello everybody and welcome to my digital world. My name is Tumblr Sexy Man number 2537. And I just can't wait to show you all the raggy zaggy wacky adventures that me and my friends will put you on. But before that, I wanted to test the waters to see how you guys like me in our first pilot episode. So tell me, what do you think? <sighs> Excuse me? You heard me, buddy. Don't think you can try to skip me out on this one. Do you think you can make a digital character with that hip-to-shoulder ratio without me asking some questions? He's literally a rectangle. Up, 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 up. You're mine now. He's mine now. And that will never change. Oh, by the way, how much of your team can I harass online? I, wait, wait, what? So... You know why we're here. This video is going to be all my thoughts on the amazing digital circus. For once, I think I have a very specific set of credentials that actually apply to this certain topic. Like, I'm an animator, I'm terminally online, and also I'm studying for a film degree, so analyzing stuff like this is actually kind of what I'm supposed to do. Is there any way for me to turn this in for a grade? We're gonna analyze the animation, the writing, the storytelling, the possible hints for future things, the production, and of course, the fandom. The fandom in particular has become kind of a contentious issue when it comes to discussing Digital Circus, so I'm gonna throw my hand to the ring and see what happens. So of course, let's get into the show! Do the thing! Alright, let's start this with my favorite category, animation. I think one of the few things the entirety of the internet agrees on is that the animators popped off for this entire goddamn pilot. The fluidity, the style, just everything about the animation in this entire show is beautiful. Personal props to the people who animated the Ragatha glitching out scene. Like, the fact that it looks like she's genuinely just a 3D model that's breaking in the software, but it's still being animated in that way is just really cool to me. Also, can we just appreciate how anytime Kane is on screen, he's just so expressive despite, you know, being a mouth with eyes in it. Getting expression out of characters without human-like appearance is such a difficult thing to do, and I really love how they do it with Kane's, like, gum eyebrows. I don't, I don't know really how to explain it. A funny thing is that I actually was pretty unaware of Glitch Productions. Like, I knew of their show Murder Drones, but I hadn't actually watched it. But then I saw that Kevin Temmer actually did some shots on that show, and I got a bit interested in the production company. So, of course, when I saw him on the team for Amazing Digital Circus, I was like, okay, I gotta watch it, because I love his work, and I love his style of animation. Okay, last part that I'm gushing about, I swear. But I love the use of squash and stretch throughout the entirety of the pilot. While that's very normal to happen in 2D animation, in 3D it actually becomes a whole other their challenge. So the fact that they got all the characters to kind of run around and squash, stretch, and leap in such chaotic ways was just so good and it matched the theme of the show really well. Especially for such a small team of people, like, you gotta give them props for this. It's just really incredible work. Okay, I'm done gushing. Time to actually get critical of this stuff. Okay, time to talk about writing. The writing for this episode is pretty good in my opinion. Writing the pilot for a TV show is pretty difficult for most people. You gotta do things like set up the premise, set up the world, establish characters, and all this other stuff in a very short amount of time. Honestly, I think it's a bit early to actually judge whether the writing is good or not because we haven't seen the rest of the actual story. We've only been introduced to what this world is. The only criticism I really have of the episode is that it felt like it was trying to do too much and somehow too little at the same time. Like, for this episode, there was the plot with Kane and the exit, Kofmo and his abstraction, Pomni being introduced to the world, and the whole Monster of the Week gloinks thing that happened. It felt like the story was trying to pack in as much mystery as it could for the fans so that people could get interested in it before the actual story really started. For me personally, that takes out a lot of the weight in the mystery and the curiosity and kind of doesn't let the story breathe in its own right. But also that might just be a me thing. This is a pilot and it could just be throwing things together so people will get interested and then it might remake the first episode so that it could be a lot more streamlined later. Or not, because it's a good episode either way, so I think that the creators should just do what they want to do. Next thing. I think more people need to talk about the editing of this episode because oh my god is it amazing. In animation, audio editing becomes a very specific and difficult thing to do, and I just think that they hit it out of the park with this one. That, combined with the stellar animation done by the entire cast, made this pilot just so much better and really took home the gold along with the animation. I mean, this is one of my favorite clips from the show, and it's just like, it encapsulates everything that I love about the audio editing mixed with the great voice acting. Do you like adventure? Activity? Wonder? Danger? Horror? Pain? Suffering? Pain? Death? 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 Angel food cake? Ow! YOU PARASITES! The wacky and zany sound effects mixing with like the dark and echoey space that is like the tent as like this looming force is really cool to me. And also guys, everyone knows that last scene with like the swell of the music and everything just... 
on point. Of course, my favorite editing bit was the part in the intro where it literally glitches out and repeats itself over and over. Such a small detail, but such a great sign of like, oh, something is broken here. It's things like that that I just love about these types of indie productions that are just happy to kind of do whatever to make sure they get across the idea that they want. Okay, I'm gushing again. Moving on. The characters. Oh, do I have a lot to say about the characters. Let's go one by one, shall we? Pomni's an interesting protagonist. Her design is really cool, and I just loved her general panic state throughout the episode. She's really good stand-in for the viewer being like, what the hell is going on? But still seems to have enough of her own personality to kind of stand out as her own character. Even if a lot of that personality is just kind of being panicked. I don't know, I found it funny. B tier. Ragatha is also a pretty cool character. I like the fact that she's like a Raggedy Ann doll, but also like the mom of the group. I also like that her caring behavior is generally just another coping mechanism that she uses just to control whatever's going around in her life. Every character seems to have a different coping mechanism, and I like that they all have their own individual kind of thing that they're just going through. Also, B tier. Kinger is already my favorite character in this entire damn show. His delayed reaction screams are just so funny to me for no reason. I think it's a nest. But I also love his crazy man aesthetic where he just kind of says random things and I don't know, I find it enjoyable. He's the funny uncle, funny uncle character. A tier. Kane is also awesome. His expressive exaggeration mixed with his very intense anxiety at the same time is just such a cool mixture for a character. He really feels like a guy who's just trying to keep things together for everybody and not just like this evil villain that I kind of expected him to be. It makes me a lot more interested in his character and personality because it just makes me wonder like what on earth is he doing with this world and like why does he do what he does. S tier. Am I the only one who felt like I didn't really get much of Zubal? Not that I don't understand the character, more just like I didn't really get much time with them. I mean, their apathetic attitude is obviously another coping mechanism similar to the other characters, but other than that, there's not much to the character that I really got, so I'm just kind of waiting to see what more there can be. Question mark tier? I'm gonna be honest, I forgot about Gangle. Which is weird, because I actually like the character. I think the comedy and tragedy mask kind of dictating the character's emotions is a pretty fun concept. I also love the character design, I think it's one of my favorite designs in the show, just because of how the ribbons like turn into a whole human body like it's, it's cool but yeah i'm gonna be honest i forgot this character existed plus a lot of gangle's character is kind of overshadowed by the fact that Jax is just bullying them the entire episode so this is also kind of an undecided one but i'm putting in an a anyway because i like the character design <sighs> Do I have to talk about the rabbit? Look, I get it. Everyone loves the mean rabbit, but like, I, I don't understand why. Don't get me wrong. I don't think Jax is a bad character. In fact, I actually really like how his character is mean, mainly because he's trying to have fun, but he's so bored, he only gets it out of hurting people. It makes him kind of a small time villain in the fact that like, he's not antagonistic towards the plot, but he is antagonistic towards the characters, which can be fun. But on the other hand, he's just, he's just so rude. And again, that's fine for the character, but like, why would you like him after that like he's so mean he seems to kind of balance the line between a character that's meant to be hated and a character that's meant to be endearing because they're awful and i don't know how i feel about that kind of balance and i'll be honest i kind of like his character design the least out of like the whole group but i do enjoy his kind of 1920s animation era design in fact thinking about it now Jax actually reminds me a lot of old mickey mouse cartoons how the character was really just antagonistic to everyone around him and while that is enjoyable it's interesting to place that into an ensemble cast setting, so I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Find out next time on B tier. Hey, I'm just putting this at this random point in the video because I just wanted to say thank you for watching. I hope you're enjoying the video so far and I hope you enjoy the rest of it. My channel is small, but I try to put a lot of work into these videos because it is something that I really enjoy doing and something that, you know, I'm also currently studying, so it's something that I'm very proud of. Getting to hear people's feedback on said videos and learning to try to make things better and testing out new things, it's really fun and I'm glad that you guys are kind of allowing me to do that in a fun and creative way. Anyway, I better stop stalling. Let's talk about the fandom. It's hard for me to add something to this conversation because this topic of fandom has kind of blown up along with the pilot that came out about a week or so ago. I mean, people went feral for this show, and there's obvious reasons why. I mean, I obviously like it a lot as well. However, the thing that was interesting was when the fandom kind of became aware that it was being created. Like, you could watch in real time how people were getting wary of what they were saying and doing because they were realizing, oh no, could we be a cringy fandom? A lot of people started comparing things to Welcome Home, another big internet series, and honestly started getting scared. Anyone who's been on the internet for more than five years knows that fandoms have ups and downs no matter what's going on. The type of fandom doesn't usually matter, but we have a tendency to see this pattern happening a lot more with indie art and indie productions. I think this happens because a lot of indie stuff happens on the internet, and because of that, the internet kind of considers it its own. The internet is its place, and it needs to be kept in that space. 
By that I mean there's kind of a protectiveness over it. And this is normal. I don't want anyone to think that this is like a bad thing to happen. Fandoms naturally build off of creations. When groups of people find similar interests, they're naturally going to want to come together and discuss that because that's the most human thing that we can possibly do other than like eating and sleeping. Humans are communicators and fandom is one of the most expressive mediums for human communication that have existed since the dawn of the internet. However, there's nothing that can't be taken too far. There's examples of this happening in multiple different fandoms including Five Nights of Freddy's, Slenderman, Undertale, and way, way more. And people know this and are trying to learn from their past where they can say, hey, let's not do these things. Even the creator of the show, Gooseworks, has put out many statements trying to say, hey, don't do this stuff. Please be kind to each other. Even if some people don't like it or like something too much, that is okay. As long as we are not directly harming other people or wishing direct harm on other people. And forgive me for a moment, but I'm going to kind of analyze this on multiple sides here. I'd like to preface this by saying this is a lot of my own experience coming into this theory, so it's not like any backed evidence. I could do a video on that, but that would have to be an entirely separate thing. So how does an extreme fandom form? Well, if you look at Digital Circus right now, you'll see one thing happening in particular. Right now, the creation of three different sides of an argument are happening. One side praises the show for being amazing. The other side tries to critique the show, either in good faith or not. Either way, it embodies some type of negative connotation of the media. And then there's this third side, which is the middleman trying to say, hey, why don't we all get along? Because this is the internet, each side can get very verbose in how it defends its particular side. Even the middle people will have a tendency to get very agitated when two people are actually arguing about something entirely different and they just want there to be peace but then they get angry that there isn't peace, if that makes sense. It gets a lot more complicated than the way I'm explaining, but that's like the simplest version that I can put it in. I think each side have a tendency to try and push and pull at each other anytime there's an interaction on the internet. This brings in people to defend each side and kind of grows the popularity of whatever argument is going on. And because of the popularity of the argument, algorithms will push that argument up so more people within that fandom will see it and continue to argue about it. One thing that I frequently hear is, if you don't like it, why don't you just not interact with it. I never understood this argument because the point of media and the point of fandom is to interact and communicate. So why shouldn't someone voice their opinion when they see something they disagree with when it comes to that thing that they're interested in? I mean, hell, I'll call up Scorsese right now and argue with him about Marvel movies because that's what we do as consumers of media. The issue then comes when people start threatening others over this media that they enjoy and want to argue about. Again, because the way algorithms push violence and arguments to our faces constantly, we have this tendency to kind of get used to the idea of violence and wishing violence on others when we disagree with them. I think another thing that adds into this is the fact that art is so subjective that in the middle of an argument both sides can be right. You can have two separate interpretations of media that contradict each other and both be correct. I see this a lot happening when people try to dog on each other on places like TikTok and Twitter and say things like, oh you just lack media literacy or something like that. We get into the ad hominems and attacking the person more than we attack the argument because we don't really know what to do with such a subjective argument. This leads to fighting, aggression, and a lot of really negative things happening that, again, the algorithm will push up. Because let's be honest, instead of changing Twitter's name to X, we can just call it World Star with words. But all of this is to say, I actually have hope for this fandom. Yeah, I know, shocking, but hear me out real quick. This is one of the first fandoms I've seen that is so aware of itself. From the creator down to a lot of the people that contribute to the actual fandom itself, we all know what's going on. Many of us have been down this road before and we don't want to repeat the past. And while my solution isn't really simple, I think it is something that we can try. We, the Digital Circus community, should try to lead by example. From the creator down to people who just discovered the show, we should all try to express care and generosity to all the people that will join this fandom in the future. I know it sounds weird to say that considering I'm just talking about a show that only has one episode and just came out a week ago, but screw it, right? I'm interested in this, I see a lot of other people are also interested in it, so I think we should give it a chance. And I think we should also give the fandom a chance, even though it's also brand new. Let's have fun. Make fan art, fan songs, fan music videos, fan YouTube videos, fan animations, fan animatics, anything. Let's all just remember that behind all the screens are other people. Other people that are just as interested in this topic as you are. And that curiosity is something that we can all share. So with that, I've been Elias of Elias Entertainment. New art, new media, and new fandoms can be crazy, but I think we have a chance. So let's all go take a ride at the amazing Digital Circus. Oh, bye now.